Oh, hello. Today I'm in Big Bear. Oh no, wait, no. Today I'm in Santa Monica, sorry. I'm here in Santa Monica, California to visit the camera obscura in honor of International Pinhole Camera Day. Join me as we celebrate the most incredible holiday of all time. So what is pinhole photography? Good question. It's when you basically have a camera that doesn't have a lens. Instead, it has a very, very tiny hole in a piece of metal that focuses the image. Kind of like an aperture on a camera, but because the aperture is so small, you don't even need a lens. And you get infinite depth of field in your picture. I'm also gonna be reviewing the Diana multi-pinhole operator camera in honor of International Pinhole Camera Day. All these people are here to celebrate International Pinhole Camera Day. Look, all of them, they're all here for that. All of you no doubt have school and work off. There will be no mail today to interrupt your celebrations. As you all gather around the pinhole camera tree and exchange pinhole camera presents while hiding pinhole camera eggs. Happy pinhole camera day, everyone. This is the outside of the camera obscura. You can see on the roof there, that's the little thing where the, uh, where the pinhole is for the camera obscura and it can turn around and then the image gets projected on a disc inside. Camera obscura. Da da da. disc around and it's actually a really it's actually a really good image it's really sharp in the center so you can use the wheel to turn I guess I'll turn it the other way and turn it towards me that is so cool you can see up there that little hole is where the image is coming through. And I'm struck by the sharpness of the image. Oh, there's a person running. They have no idea that we're watching them right now. You have no idea that we're watching you. Camera obscura. So yeah, I would, I would highly recommend visiting a camera obscura. So what is pinhole photography day? This amazing holiday that we celebrate every year on the last Sunday of April. Well, let's look at the website. This is an international event created to promote and celebrate the art of pinhole photography. On this unique day, we encourage people throughout the world to take some time off from the increasingly technological world we live in to participate in the simple act of making a pinhole photograph. So I thought that today for Pinhole Photography Day, it would be cool if we visited the Camera Obscura because it uses the same technology as pinhole photography. It focuses all the light through a tiny pinhole. But I also wanted to um, talk a little bit about my experience personally with pinhole photography. Um, years ago, um, I made my first pinhole camera. And what I did was I took an old um, regular 35 millimeter point and shoot camera and I took it apart and I took the little um, single element lens out. It was just a simple plastic camera. And I replaced it with a pinhole that I had made myself by flattening out uh, the tin of a soda can and then using a sewing needle to make the pinhole and then sanding both sides. The tricky thing with pinhole photography is determining how long to expose the image because um, when I was first doing it, I really wasn't sure. So I just 
I looked on the internet and I tried to kind of gauge as best I could how long to expose the image, but it can be difficult. I had some pretty good success uh, with uh, the one that I made, and I really like the images. Um, they're very sort of haunting. They kind of have like a, a little bit of a softness to them. And um, obviously the subject matter is going to be a bit creepy because it's me. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed that experience. When I found out about the Diana Lomography multi-pinhole camera, I was really interested to try it out. It basically has three pinholes on the front instead of a lens, and you can actually switch on the bottom how many pinholes you want to expose the image. You can have either one, two, or three. And it also has, you can take off this little thing here and you can put these little colored gels in there so that it'll expose um, a different color for each pinhole. And that's mostly what I did when I was playing with it. And it takes 120 film, although you could modify it to take 35 millimeter if you wanted to. But I shot 120. And um, again, the trick is to figure out how long to expose the image for. Um, basically when you, when you pull down the shutter, it just holds it open the entire time. You, you just take your hand away and it just holds it open. So you have to actually flick it back up. So when I looked online, I was using 400 speed film and um, it was a bright sunny day and it said to keep it open for half a second. So basically I would go and then just click it closed again, even though that was probably more like a second than half a second. But I feel like the, the images I took came out pretty good. Um, I took a couple pictures of myself, and I took a couple pictures um, of the pier. Um, some of them came out overexposed, though. Um, some of the pictures I took, uh, I wasn't completely satisfied with. Again, this was just me experimenting with this camera. I'd never used it before. I didn't do any with just one pinhole, because I really wanted to test the whole combining different colored pinholes thing. So I was using the gels and um, the multi-pinhole option. It's just difficult to when you have such a long exposure to hold the camera steady. So sometimes I was leaning against the pier um, or I just tried to just hold my hand really steady. But obviously, ideally, it would be better to have actually a tripod. Happy Pinhole Photography Day. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying your Pinhole Photography Day. Um, there's all kinds of tutorials online on how to make your Pinhole camera if you would like to do so. And yeah, feel free to do it. And don't forget to subscribe.